Shalom everyone, welcome to this channel. Finally, today I'm going to echo unto you our feast of Sukkoth. And just in case you're wondering where to find it in the scripture, you can find it in Leviticus 23 and you can also find it in Zechariah 14. And uh, I would like to share a few things about the feast. By the way, that Hebrew word Sukkoth, uh, is the, it comes from the word Sukkah, and that is Booth, B-O-O-T-H. And what's this, but, because it goes like this. If you're going to look it in your scripture, usually the common translation for that is Feast of Tabernacles. But if you try to look at that in the original tongue, where our scripture was originally written, what you can find is Kag HaSukoth, and it's the Feast of Booth because the Hebrew word for Tabernacles is Miskanim and the, it comes from the word, root word Miskan and so the Hebrew word for Tabernacle is Miskan and say the plural form is Miskanim so when we say Tabernacles that mis, that's Miskanim and so the Sukkot supposedly is the Feast of Booths okay so let's move forward I'm gonna try to share with you why is it, by the way, why is it that we're celebrating that? Because for us, Israelites, it's a reminder that we're living in a temporary life. And so we are reminding the lives of our forefathers, Israelite, as they left Mitzrayim, Egypt, the land of bondage, that they dwell in a temporary dwelling. Yet Father is surrounded them with his protection. And also, uh, that's to remind us that whatever we went through with this life, it's just all temporary. We are living in this temporary tent. And so, on that feast, seven days, we also try to live in uh, a temporary dwelling. We try to left our homes and try to dwell in a temporary dwelling. Uh, uh, we have a different stance with regards to the thing. Some still stays in the building, in, in say, some in hotels. But I and my husband, we love to stay in tents. Though, say, the Hebrew word for tent actually is ohel, if I remember it right. And so, it will really be so strict with the word uh, soka, it should be a booth. But in a way, the, the essence of that is it, this is about temporary dwelling and I would say that uh, we we spent our see this feast at the state of Missouri and the reason why uh, we I and my husband choose to, to spend it there it's not because that uh, we don't allow our brothers and sisters here in Illinois that we used to spend feast with in fact I would say right after the feast of Yom Tiroa, as we try to bid goodbye to our temporary goodbye with them and let them know that we can be with them in the feast of Sokoth I would really say I must admit my heart is fierce like it's I it's really like I'm missing them that I can't be with them in last festival but yeah every time I'm in that feeling like the first time I spent festival here that how I longed my brothers and sisters from the Philippines would be with me this festival and now as we try to spend at what my brothers and sisters in Missouri I also miss my brothers and sisters in Shalom Assembly how I long that we can be together in one place even my brothers and sisters all around the world that I never met yet in person how I long that we can uh, spend this festival of Father here in one place and we can all be together. I know it will come true, but that would be when Zechariah 14 will, will be here. And it would be really so nice and really be so amazing. Even those people who will try to say that we don't need this festival anymore. Just kindly read the chapter in, a, in your scripture, in our scripture. And you really know that days are coming that you're gonna join with us in this festival. Okay, anyway, so I would go over to 
the challenges that say we meet along this festival so it started uh, my desire started by the way to to spend this festival with my brothers and st uh, sisters in Steelville way back last year and that's when finally I would say if 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 choosing a pronunciation of our Messiah would be like an election and I'd cast my vote to Yehoshua that's when it started with this desire that I want to spend this festival with my brothers and sisters at Steelville because I know their vote or their say their conviction is same with mine and I want to say receive this or have an immersion by this name I would say in this pronunciation I would say and so that's all started and funny when I try to share that with my husband his conviction or say his desire to spend this festival to is on that place and I don't know why but he just want to go there I guess because he loved the place there he loved the trees there because like it's like an Ozark like mountainous area with lots lots of trees and I guess that's, that's the reason why he loves to go there uh, needless to mention that the place where we are say spending the festival is like there's less uh, radiation I would say because there's less signal there and so it's um, advantage of my situation and so and that's another thing so in a way so we are I would really say I'd really praise you for how he guided my brothers and sisters sisters there on how they organize the feast and say uh, even say before this COVID thing when you we, when you are going to join the festival there they have this what they call chip point and where they're going to give you your envelopes where they're, they're contained the uh, activities and your name tag and they're going to assign you into a certain tribe and then they're gonna start the festival with a parade like that a marching is that what we call that and you're gonna march tribe by tribe it's just like how they sort of like get out from the land of Mitzrayim that the, the march the, the parade the walk and so we do that and we're carrying a banner with our different the 12 tribes of Israel and so I would say the cheek point there becomes a help for us in the situation of COVID thing I would say because they utilize that to check our temperature for our safety and some of price for the 520 registered uh, I'll say adult like that excluding the children somehow there's just one brother that he had a COVID and since we know since we know what prior to the feast so he was put in quarantine and so Croatia I guess it's about three weeks now since the feast and still I guess zero percent of the COVID see infected with COVID upon that festival and so it's really great and amazing I guess greater chance with 700 because the children are not included with that counting of 520 it's just the registered one okay more likely the adult okay so another thing that I would like to praise father I guess it helps so much with his guidance on how are we going to how the festival should go with and father guided brothers and sisters there to have a tent outside and it's where we gather and it's really funny because before coming there I had this feeling that I'm going to attend the wedding and when we reached there the first thing that I've really seen is a huge tent all in white and my impression really is this is a wedding <laughs> I told my husband this is a wedding because it's really nice pure white huge tent and it's where we spend meeting together spending time praising there reading Torah and that's how we did it and it's really so nice I would say so praise you for that and another wonderful thing I would say that what's this if I, if there's something that I can recommend to any gatherings any festival of Sokot that I want me to be copied from that that feast there is this thing that we have a table there inside the, the tent and then you can put there something you'd like to share your brother with be food with be clothes you can put it there and if you are this brother who lack of 
the thing lack of food or lack of clothes and you can get there and it's truly amazing it's truly so nice and i really greatly appreciate that so yeah i would suggest that that would be happy it's really so nice and talking of activities so i just found in the book of of deuteronomy and also in the book of Ezra that the Torah is commanded to be read in this festival and so that's what we're doing there so every morning we have Hebrew lessons we have praise and worship and we have Torah reading in the afternoon sometimes we have the story time where I believe is the oldest man I've seen there and <laughs> the way I feel him I feel him like he's my grandfather and so he had story time with the children and that's an amazing thing with him to usually he did that usually in the afternoon and I would really say father is really there also works with us with activity because supposedly on the first day we had a, we had a message of a brother in immersion but I guess it's father has work because that say the first day it's really so cold it's raining and I would really say we experience almost everything that say the temporary life can show with us we will experience cold rain heat by the sun all of that we experience but yeah price yeah because this all those things are all temporary and we really experience that like 32 degrees so cold raining and 97 degrees heat of the sun we experience that both and so yeah i guess it's just storm that we don't experience at the time so praise you for that somehow we enjoy the feast even though we experience those things and yeah let's go back to the first day activity so funny thing because we ended up supposedly it should be message of a brother and then immersion but the honest message i guess father put something on him guided him that it ended up that his message really moved us into the point of repentance and because his message is about this COVID thing that you should need to repent like that and it's amazing because it's first day of the feast and we ended up repenting our sins and i really love that because if you can still remember with my word that i left with you in my last video i said i was so troubled with this thing about isaiah 59 is asking prayers for our healing like that because I was thinking if I have sins that make father turn his face away from me how can I expect healing and if there's anyone there is praying for me but yet don't want to turn away from their sin and makes father turn away his face from us or in the congregation so how can we expect healing so that troubled me so much and really comes me to the point that we need to repent we need to turn away from our sins before we'll ask father of anything or something and so with that as our first day of the feast of Sukkot, i really feel like that's amazing because i would really say that maybe help us with our zero percent of the infected person in the feast because we spent it first we first uh, as we parade by the way as we march with tribe by tribe we anoint the boundaries or the boundaries of of the campsite and in the first day was spent in repentance and it's really great and really amazing and i praise you for that guidance as we go on with our feast and <laughs> here's another and i could really say that uh the the risk the hindrances that we met along the way by the way uh, as we try to go there i would really say the enemy really tries to hinder us to reach there first uh i would really say my health was really greatly affected after my seizure of may 4 then when our see bankruptcy filing that makes up need to pay more than four thousand dollars every month with my with my say knowing that i was pregnant and knowing that i had miscarriage all those things really at every point really makes us feels like we can twitch there and yeah, we really ended up I, we even come to the point that we try to join this rapple draw hoping against hope that that can help us reach there and 
we come to the point also of trying to withhold our tithes from September 11 pay and September 25 but still it did not work because we have a very high bills on September 25th and so we really left no choice uh, we ended up my husband ended up saying to me that we need to humble ourselves I need to ask the ministry there hoping against hope that you can find the favor in their eyes to to become one of the beneficiaries of this what they call the feast fund and praise that yeah we are one of their beneficiaries we found favor in their, in their eyes with regards to that matter and i would even say prior to our trouble found out that a lot of my son's clothes couldn't fit him anymore and i will try to count and count the clothes hoping against hope that that would be enough but in my thought it will not be enough I'm thinking if I change him three times a day or oh my disclose will not be enough and another really thing that's so hard when we found out that we just have one left one package left for our diaper and not even full and thinking what I really found out is I left I don't want to call this diaper anymore I don't want to be stressed I'll just pronounce that this diaper will be enough until the feast will be over <laughs> and finally praise yeah before we left there there's really one diaper left so that we can use for our son and yeah praise you for that so that's really that's the challenges that we met there but i would really say that uh there's really a great say growth in our faith that i forever praise you that we really choose to go there and one of those things, one, one night, my husband came to our tent and he really, I could really see the change in the way he treated me. And I was asking, what did he learn there in the, in the men's meeting? And uh, I was really amazed with what he told me that there's a brother there that say, taught them ancient Hebrew and it's like, what's going on with my husband because i would really say for my three years here in the united states i would say since the first time i came here i already keep pushing and pushing him to learn hebrew and then really no effect i would say but then just one night he came to our tent and bring me this word and he said i learned this thing there he said and i don't know if you can see that there this is ancient hebrew you can go to ancient hebrew research center to research about this matter more and so i drove here this is the aleph this is the ox head that symbolizes strong or strength and this is beth bayet and this is the house and this is noon this is a seed or should we, to, to, to simplify it a sperm like that and so this is, by the way, the Hebrew word for stone, and this is pronounced Iben, Iben. Okay. And he told me, he taught us this word, and do you know that there is a two word here? And, and he said, this is the Hebrew word for father, and this is the strong leader of the house, Ab. And uh, the Hebrew word Ab, that's the Hebrew word, and this English is father. And the second word here is ben that is and ben is hebrew word for son and that is the house of seed and i told him yeah yeah i can relate but then he told me do you know that we have five parts and we are made of spirit will being we have mind emotion and flesh and we are a womb <laughs> i was thinking wait a minute so why is it how is that related with Iben and so in a way my curiosity was triggered and I say and he told me and he will be teaching still until Friday and I said I gotta go there and search these things out why is this so in a way I did not able to come the following day because I had uh, need to join where the daughters of the life and that's also a very amazing thing as I went there and I would say this thing about things that troubled me was Isaiah 59 I also met there with a sister and she was healed for 14 cancerous tumors and what's this uh, with just repentance thing and 
he had a lot of books that I would say we're still learning from her up to this time. And yeah, it's totally amazing. I would say of all the form of healing, this is the thing that I love the most. Okay, so I already went through this different form of healing. I would say uh, my father, I've seen my father doing this miracle, miraculous thing like praying just like the once Christian Pentecostal do it that way. And he also went to this healing to herb. And yeah, I would really say when I was in my sick bed, I could really say that the best form of healing would be through Yahushua performing miracles to us. Um, the way I remember when I was still on my sick bed is this when Yahushua says he healed you, he says she believe healed you, and he's gonna end up with a prescription and that is seen no more. Go and see no more. And so as when I was on my sick bed, I would say how I long that I can meet Yahushua and just like the people in his time, sick people in his time who ask him to heal them, I surely can ask him to heal me and follow his prescription and that is to see no more. And then so when I was in that thought, I was thinking that Shaul and Shimon Kepha performed the same miracle miracle that Father did, that Yahushua did. And so I was thinking, is there any apostle, disciple, thought one of Yahushua this time that still have that power, I would say, that possess the teaching and do not deny the power of the teaching? And so when I hear that see, sister of mine, saying that he was healed from sub 14 cancers two more to repentance i feel like i guess i need to learn something from this sister and i would really see prior when i hear that from her as even at first i was thinking because her voice is really just like 28 years old or early 30s i feel like can i learn something from this young lady is <laughs> thinking i never know that seems like she's now in her 70s because he said she said she was healed way back in, at her age 65 it's like to repent with her sins with her mother's so greatest chance she's now 17 I did not have a chance to ask for her age and or about I guess they're celebrating or about to celebrate at the time they're about to celebrate their 50 year anniversary of her husband and so she's not, she's not quite that young but yeah she had really, I really learned a lot of things from her and still learning from her. And I really love, I would really see among the healing that I've seen, I love this healing that comes to repentance because it also works with our way to eternal life. And I would say this is the best form of healing that I wanted to have healing to repentance of sin. And I learned from her that before it becomes physical, it first went to our spiritual. And that's something that I'm going to share with you in my next video. That's all about the, what's this? It's all about the, the Yom Hagadol, the fourth uh, fall feast. And by the way, finally, I also had chance to watch this. We have a tabernacle tour and just in case you want to go over that i would suggest visit ilia.com and i guess the crown of thorn that would would help you understand better about this tabernacle uh let me just say something that the thing that i learned from there is that we are this this miskind this temporary tent and we are this thorny bush in time of moshi and that the, the parable talks about that Father here wants to live with us, he be in the, con the consuming fire, and we be, uh, be in the thorny because thorn represents sin. And so, this is the thing that I learned from there. And I want to go move forward w with what I learned from Midrash because this is the thing that I see, I really one of the things that I love there. And so, as I go joining the Midrash. Uh, I learned there that the theme of our, our that Sokoth is we want to the, the image of Father to be seen in the whole world when we want to plant his seed so so his image will be seen through us to the people all around us and so the first thing that I learned when I first joined the Midrash is this about this 
Makasa and it's about refuse, it's about shield like that. And so still my mind go wonder what's that all about in a way in the next time that I join there. Uh, it's about the safety of sisters that they need brothers. It's like I couldn't get these things until finally I would say on the first, second, third, the time that I went there. And that's when this a couple there, a brother and a sister, that their marriage is about to be broken. And they were, their marriage, I would say, was saved by the brotherhood. And so they were asked to share their testimony. Uh, their marriage is about to be broken because of adultery and all other scenes like that. And so they were asked to do their testimony. And after they did that, this that sister of mine said at one time he she already came to the point of telling her husband that I I guess I'd rather be died because if I gonna die I guess you can find a better wife for yourself and so after she said after her testimony as she sat down my husband approached her because I also said that word to my husband and he said do you know that my has my wife also said that word and at the time, I'm about to leave the city area where we had that midrash. But I forgot to carry that box of, see, there's a sister that gave me a box where inside there is uh, just, uh, uh, documents that's about counting the Omer for the Feast of Shibaoth. And so I need to come back. And when I hear their conversation, I lack no choice but to let them know that I was there. I go, hi, I'm here. And so I know why they recognized me and they started talking about this thing that helped me understand why is that this event here and what are these things that they're talking about that woman needs their safety like that, the refuse and their safety. And then I finally realized what they're talking about and this is a stone, right? The Hebrew word for stone, Iban. And Iban is made up of a father and the son. And the father and the son are our brother and for us to have safety we need to have a wall and heap and the wall a strong we need a strong wall to be protected and if you try to look at that strong wall in Hebrew this is strong right the ox said and this is a wall and strong wall is the Hebrew word for act so actually brother the Hebrew word for brother is act and act Supposedly, you are the strong wall of the congregation. And for us to have strong wall, we need to have a band. We need to have stone. Out of stone, more stone, the more stronger our wall is. And that's why finally I understand that. Why is it that's a band? So, uh, a stone, the one that's used to make a wall, are our father and our son and they are the brother in the congregation and supposedly the rule of every man in the congregation is to protect the congregation and who are we protecting of we are protecting the womb why because this womb will gonna give birth to sin and so brothers men Father, son, your rule is to protect the womb, to protect the woman, to protect the garden. And that's what Adam fails to do. And you need to protect your woman, I would say. Try to check every now and then how's the spirit going on, what's going on in their real being, what's going on in their mind, what's going on in their emotion and their flesh. And if you can see that there's a seed of the enemy there you need to abort that through prayer to going to our say our our groom and that is Yahushua and if you can't make that you need to bring that to the brotherhood to the brothers and more stone the stronger the world will be and it's pretty amazing that I learned from the feast of Sokot and I would really say that that is the reason why the enemy don't want us to come there and the next thing it's truly really amazing because that couple that we met there they brought us to the brothers and our brothers really i would say sacrificed their time 
just to help us what we are struggling and i would say up to this time they're still working with us and we're still reaching each other and learning with each other and i really love that and i can't wait to share with you what the what we did uh and that would be in the next video because i guess i already exceeded more than 20 minutes so i hope that i the the thing that flows onto me flows onto you too so until next time and yes willing shalom everyone